Okay, in this question we have a function, and the function is given by this three-term expression here, and we're told that we can put in x is a real number and x must be less than negative 1. We're asked for part a to show f of x can be written in this simplified form. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, write this out and in factorised form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and factorise as I go along. This uh, is factorised, these two terms are factorised, that's factorised, but the bottom here I can write that in a factorised form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this out, so f of x is going to be equal to 3 subtract uh, x subtract 1 over x subtract 3 add uh, x add 11 all divided by the factorised form. That should factorise as following. You should be able to factorise those fairly quickly. Negative 3 add 1 like that. Okay, now in order to combine these fractions here, I'm just going to spread out my working a little bit. In order to combine uh, these components here, I need the denominators to be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ensure that each term has a denominator that has a 2x add 1 on the denominator and an x subtract 3. So let's consider um, this part here first. This already has the x subtract 3 factor. So all I've got to do is multiply the top and bottom by 2x add 1. So 2x add 1 would go there. 2x add 1 would go there as follows. Okay, and then... For this one here, well, I need to multiply the top and bottom by 2x add 1, x subtract 3. So I must do that on the top as well. So I'm just going to move that 3 slightly so I've got more space. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 2x add 1, x subtract 3. Okay, and there we go. We've got an attempt at trying to combine them now. Now what we can do is we can expand each of these parts separately. So we can expand that, we can expand that and we can expand that and write it in one uh, numerator. So we're going to say f of x is equal to 3 multiplied by this expanded. Now you know this expanded is just that, okay? Because you factorise from that. So that expanded must be 2x squared subtract 5x subtract 3. Now we're taking away, this takeaway means take away everything up here. So put a big bracket around this, take away this expanded here, and this expanded is going to be equal to 2x squared subtract x subtract 1. So just check you get that expansion, but that's how that expands. And lastly, on the top here, we have an add, an x add 11, like that. And all of that is going to be divided by our common uh, factors on the denominator, which were 2x add 1 and an x subtract 3. Now, key idea here, mistakes students make. I think the main mistake they make is that negative. They just uh, think that that makes that negative 2x squared. This means subtract everything in that bracket there. So when we're going to expand this out, be very, very careful you remember that. So this is, I'm going to multiply out by 3. So we're going to have 6x squared subtract 15x subtract 9. Now, I'm subtracting a 2x squared. I'm subtracting a negative x, so that's like adding an x, and I'm subtracting a negative 1, so that's like adding 1, and we've just got our add x, add 11 there, all over the common denominator that we had decided on previously, which is 2x add 1, x subtract 3. Now we combine like terms, so what have we got with x squared? We've got a 6x squared, take away a 2x squared, so that's going to be a 4x squared, what else have we got? Well, we've got um, negative 15x, add an x, add another x. So negative 15x, add 2x's would be negative 13x. So we have negative 13x. And lastly, we've got ourselves here a negative 9, uh, add 11, and add 1. So add 12. Negative 9, add 12. So we're going to have ourselves positive 3. And all of that divided by... 2x add 1, x subtract 3. Now look up at our question. Let's see if we're on the right tracks. Uh, the top has a 4x minus 1 and a 2x add 1 on the bottom. So we've got our 2x add 1. Let's try and factorise the top. 
And we should be able to think, looking at the question, that one of the factors must be 4x subtract 1. So if one of the factors was 4x subtract 1, what must the other factor be? Well, it's certainly an x. And to get a uh, multiply by negative 1 to get your positive 3 must be a negative 3. Does it give us this term? 4x multiplied by negative 3 is negative 12x. Negative 1 multiplied by x is another negative x. So yes, it does. All of that divided by 2x add 1, x subtract 3. You'll notice we have a common factor of x subtract 1 on the top and bottom, which we can divide. So they cancel each other. And so we're left with the f of x as required is 4x subtract 1 divided by 2x add 1, just as required. OK, so let's go back to the next part. Find an equation for the tangent to the curve y is f of x at x is negative 2. Give your answer in this form where a, b and c must be integers, so whole numbers. So we need to find the equation of the tangent Okay, at x is negative 2. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get myself the easiest possible mark. So for part b, when x is negative 2, let's work out the associated y. y would be equal to what happens when you substitute in negative 2 in here. Now, we could substitute negative 2 into the original f of x, but the whole point of this question is f of x comes to a nice simplified version. Let's use that version of it. So let's substitute x is negative 2 in here. Now, I want to encourage you to use your calculator a bit more. So get your calculator out. And if you've got this calculator here, it makes it nice and easy for you. You can press fraction and you can press 4x subtract 1 over 2x um, add 1 like that. And you can press calculate and you want to put an x is negative 2. And it gives you the answer y is equal to 3. So y is equal to 3 here. So we can say y is equal to 3. So the coordinates, negative 2, 3, are going to be what we use for our equation. Now, we need the equation of the tangent to the curve. So just to remind you what we did need, we needed, uh, we want to write it in this one, y minus y1 is mx minus x1, where x1 and y1 are, we've already found those, are a point on the curve, on the curve or the, the, on the tangent. And we also need m, which is the gradient. So what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this our function here. So we're going to find the gradient. Work out f dashed x, the differential. So if our f of x is equal to 4x subtract 1 divided by 2x add 1, we've got a quotient u divided by v. So our u is equal to 4x subtract 1, so u dash would be 4. Our v is equal to 2x add 1, so our v dash, a differential, is 2. We know the formula for dy by dx is as follows. So f dashed x, or the differential, using the quotient rule, which we should always state, is v u dash subtract u v dash, all divided by v squared. So this is going to be equal to v multiplied by u dash. So these two multiply together like this. When you multiply those, you get 8x add 4. And then take away those two multiply together. So subtract, I'm going to put a bracket around these two multiply together, 8x subtract 2. And all of that divided by v squared, which would be 2x add 1 all squared. OK, now remember, again, as we've seen previously, this subtract is subtract everything over here. So we're going to combine these. 8x, let's do it like this, 8x subtract 8x is clearly no x. And 4 subtract negative 2 is 4 add 2, which is equal to 6. So this is going to be 6 over 2x add 1 squared. So our gradient function is as follows. Now, where do we want our gradient? We want our gradient at x is negative 2. So we go back here and we work out f dashed of negative 2. We can get our calculator out and we can type in the function. So the function is 6 over brackets 2x add 1 all squared. Calculate. 
and where x is negative 2, we get 2 thirds. So therefore, the gradient is equal to 2 thirds. So let's go back to our formula. y subtract y1 is mx subtract x1. Let's stick in our gradient, which is 2 thirds. So 2 thirds would go there. Let's stick in our coordinates, which are negative 2 and 3. So x is negative 2 here. So we would have y subtract 3 y subtract 3 is equal to 2 thirds x subtract negative 2, like this. Okay? So, what I'd be tempted to do at this stage, because we have to give our answer in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are integers, I'd multiply everything by 3. So, if I multiplied everything by 3, I'd get 3y subtract 9 is equal to 2, and this bracket would be x add 2. Now let's multiply out, 3y subtract 9 is equal to 2x add 4, as follows. So just check the form they want it in, they want it ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. So what I can do is I can subtract 3y and add 9 to both sides, so I get uh, 0 is equal to 2x subtract 3y, and then we've got, we're going to have 4 add 9, which is positive 13, as follows. And that then is our answer to this question. Um, we look up and we just check we've done everything right and we have given it in the right form where a, b and c are integers. Just in this case, therefore, a is going to be 2, b is negative 3 and c is equal to 13 and we're done.